like to welcome you all to the uh, regular meeting of the Cicero Town Board. This is uh, April 14th. Uh, for those of you who are in the room, please note the emergency exits in the room so that in the unlikely event that you need them, you are familiar with the doors. Uh, here with us in the room this evening, besides myself, is Judy Boyke, Gretchen uh, Johans, uh, I'm sorry, Alka Johans, Tracy Kausman, Gretchen Walter, and Wayne Freeman electronically. We have Mike Bacallo, Jonathan Karp, Nancy White, Steve Procopio, uh, Neil Germain, Chris Wasnicka, Nicole Walsh, uh, Kate Fiorello, Mike uh, Marizio. I believe uh, Teresa Roth is, yes, I see Teresa, thank you. Um, so next item, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Thank you. Here. Councillor Karp. Here. Councillor White. Here. Councillor Bacallo. Present. Supervisor Meyer. Here. Uh, next item, uh, Deputy Clerk uh, Gretchen Walter will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. I ask for a moment of silence for our troops in harm's way. And please never forget our vets. We thank you. Thank you. Second item on the, second item on the agenda, approval of abstracts. Nancy? Approval of abstracts. Resolved. The Cicero Town Board approves abstracts number 12, dated 32421, 13, dated 33121, and 14, dated 4721. Second. Second, Mr. Carp. Discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Boyke. Yes. Councilor Carp. Yes. Councilor Woody. Yes. Councilor Bacallo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes, item is adopted. Thank you. Third item is supporting rebuilding I-81 versus the grid option. Whereas the community is considering many options to address the aging I-81 highway in Syracuse, and whereas the grid option with slow response time for emergency vehicles to arrive at the Syracuse hospitals, and whereas the grid option would reduce options for residents of Cicero to drive to Syracuse University and surrounding employers, and whereas the grid option would direct more traffic onto 690, which already has a current traffic flow issues and would complicate the drive to Destiny Mall, and whereas the grid option will require costly upgrades to I-41 and disrupt many homes in the town of Cicero and possibly requiring taking of homes by the state of New York for the highway project. Now, therefore, it be resolved. The Cicero Town Board requested the town supervisor to send to the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Transportation the attached letter requesting the Secretary to examine options to the I-81 project that would be less costly and less disruptive to the residents of the town of Cicero. Second. Second, Mr. Carp. Uh, this item has had a great deal of discussion. I believe a number of the board members attended a meeting that, well, a number of months ago now at the uh, CNS High School, where uh, you would have an opportunity to see the impact that increased traffic flow on 481 would be, and in particular, the taking of some homes along the uh, I-81 area, hopefully not, but they were looking at that. Um, obviously, 481 was not set up for that increased traffic flow, so the folks who would be using I-81 presently to go uh, either to Syracuse or through Syracuse would be forced on to 481 and cause a great deal more traffic for the residents of town of Cicero. Uh, any further discussion on the item? Clerk will call the roll. Yes. Councillor Karp. Yes. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Bacallo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes. Item is adopted. Thank you. Uh, Mike, number four. Renewal of contract providing nuisance animal service. Whereas the town of Cicero is in need of nuisance wildlife vendor, now therefore be it resolved. The Cicero Town Board approves the renewal of the contract with Northeast Beaver Wildlife Control to run until December 31st, 2021 and authorizes the supervisor to sign the contract. Budget code SD8540. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
404-404-0400. Second. Second, Ms. Blakey. Discussion? Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Blakey. Yes. Councilor Cart. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Vitalo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes, item is adopted. Thank you. Jonathan, number five. Whereas Avadi Abraham, the owner of the Lakeside Grill, 6727 Lakeshore Road, has requested a waiver of the 30-day notice for a New York State on-premise liquor license. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Cicero Town Board acknowledges that the Town of Cicero has received the standardized notice form for providing 30-day advance notice to a local municipality or community board and authorizes the town supervisor to sign a letter waiving the 30-day period notice requirement. Second. Uh, for information sake, the... Um... Every, every time a uh, establishment wants to set up a liquor license, they're required to notice, notify the local municipality. Um, there is a provision, as I understand, in the state liquor law that allows the local municipality to uh, waive that 30-day notice. So, in effect, in this particular case, it would potentially increase the processing time by two weeks. It's not a requirement. It's not a mandate. It's not a guarantee to the applicant. It's just um, an item that they will take into consideration. So it's asking, in essence, our uh, approval to fast track this a little bit. So that's the short version. If you have any further questions, I'll, I'll try to give you, you know, more information. Nothing further. Clerk will call the roll. Councilor Blakey. Yes. Councilor Cart. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Bacallo? Aye. Supervisor Meyer? No. Item is adopted. Thank you. Uh, next item is set a public hearing, uh, community development uh, grant, development grant, whereas the town wishes to submit a 2021 community development black grant application for funding through Ida County for enhancements to Gateway Park. Now, therefore, if we resolve the Cisco Town Board sets Wednesday, April 28th at 6.30 p.m. at 6237, I'm sorry, 6236 Brewerton Road for a public hearing to consider the 2021 Community Development Grant application. Second, Councilor Bicalo. For the discussion, number six. Did you want to add anything, Ms. Roth? Uh, no, but I can tell what, what's involved in the grant. It's um, we're trying to complete a project that was done in 2018 with paving the stone dust path. Uh, there's like an exercise or walking trail there at the park. Uh, we want to finish paving it and then uh, do some improve improvements to drainage, um, take out some dead or dying trees and plant some new trees. So uh, we're asking for $50,000 and uh, we would match 12.5. Um, the application was submitted this past week and uh, we, we find out usually around October 1st whether we get the funds or not. Thank you. Hearing no uh, further comments, uh, clerk will call the roll. Councilor Blakey. Yes. Councilor Cart. Yes. Councilor Cart. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Bicalo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes, item is adopted. Thank you. Nancy, number seven. Approve the purchase of traffic paint for the highway department. Whereas the highway department is in need of ordering traffic paint for striping the town roads. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board approves the purchase of 1,595 gallon traffic paint from the Sherwin Williams Company, state contract number 23056, in the amount of $15,000, budget code DB. Three three one zero four. Second, and um, it's striping, paint striping for the roads. Okay. Further discussion. Local call the roll. Councilor Blakey. Yes. Councilor Carp. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Bacallo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes. Item is adopted. Thank you, Nancy. Number eight. Approve the purchase of catch basins. Whereas the highway department needs to order catch basins for upcoming projects in the town of Cicero. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board approves the purchase of 20 catch basins from Sunnycrest in the amount of $8,000. Budget code DB511049. 
Second, Councillor Bicalo. Discussion on number eight. Clerk will call the roll. Councillor Boyke. Yes. Councillor Cart. Yes. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Bacalo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes, I was adopted. Thank you. Number nine, approved decommissioning access agreement, whereas converging Energy Solutions LLC duly applied to the town of Cicero for permission to operate and maintain a solar generation and energy storage facility on two pieces of land located at 6256 Island Road, tax map parcel 05401 2 Bishop, and on Topman Road, tax map numbers 05401 15.1, which is Roselli in the town, and whereas such permission was granted subject to the applicants meeting certain conditions regarding the posting of security and the execution of necessary agreements with the town. In the event town action to decommission the facility is deemed necessary during the term of the ground leases, lease and whereas the town officials reviewed and approved the proposed decommissioning plan as submitted and amended along with the amount and form of performance security to be posted and whereas to adequately protect and preserve the town in the event town action is action to remediate is necessary. The town duly requires all parties, owners, land lease participants and the town execute the proposed limited site access agreements and decommissioning plans, a copy of which has been supplied to the supervisor and board members. Now it is hereby resolved the town of Cicero approves the proposed convergent limited site access agreements and decommissioning plans necessary to initiate the projects and further authorizes the supervisor to execute any all documents necessary to complete the task. Second. Uh, for information, uh, we have Mr. Neil Germain with us this evening. Uh, Neil, along with uh, Kate, uh, Mrs. Boyke and I, uh, Steve, the planning board uh, put a lot of time in on this uh, project. Um, frankly, we were uh, concerned that some of the agreements that other municipalities had uh, approved for this type of operation was not adequate. And um, we put in some safeguards. I'm sure none of us are gonna be able to totally foresee what's gonna be down the road 25 and 30 years from now, but this puts us in a much better position to be able to, um, uh, if we end up having to take the property, uh, we'll be in a much better position on the other hand, let's be optimistic and say it's a great project. At the end of the uh, 25 years, what's the next step? And so we put in there a, um, a uh, provision that the applicant would come back to the planning board and in essence uh, review the project again. Either they'd be doing a, a shutdown or maybe they wanna extend it for another 25 years. So that at least would give the planning board an opportunity to look at the project um, another bite of the apple, so to speak. And so that would put us and the uh, other residents in a much better position. Now, my suggestion is that any of the board members uh, who would like to sit down with me to maybe uh, take some of these suggestions and put them in the code book, I think that would be constructive. Uh, we can then deal with the uh, folks in the uh, zoning office and the planning board it would be much easier for future projects and there will be future projects to have it part of the code book. So when the applicant comes in uh, and when the planning board is considering an application, they have it already uh, a roadmap, so to speak, on future projects. And then uh, we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time a project comes down the road. And I'm, I'm anticipating we could have four or five, six more applications in the next uh, year or two. So a little background. Uh, further discussion? Uh, yes. Uh, Neil, this um, particular uh, document is specific to Convergent, right? Yeah, that, that, that's right. It was, tell, it was tailored to this, to this site because we didn't really have a roadmap to go by. There were two basic things that we had to do, you know, goals of this document. The first one was to make sure that the town would be in the position to decommission, which means you have adequate funds to decommission the property under certain circumstances. 
And then I, I think like a big miss of a lot of these agreements that I've seen, you also have to have an easement that allows you to go on the property, which this provides, because a lot of times you'll, you, you'll see an agreement like this and you have funds, but you do not have the ability to actually go on the property if it ever came to fruition. But, you know, to your, to, to your question, yes, yeah, so this is specific to these sites, but it could be used as a template for future sites. Right, which sometimes may have to be tweaked, so to speak, to whatever project comes along. Right, we we would we we would be in a position to tweak it. I mean, every every site is probably a little bit different, so there right. you, you might have to change it here and there because none of the stuff is is the exact same. At, you know, from site to site, but for right. these for these sites, I th I think what you have in front of you works. That's it was the result of a long process. I'll leave it at that. Right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Further discussion on number nine, local color roll. Councillor Boyke. Yes. Councillor Karp. Yes. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Bacallo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes, item is adopted. Thank you. Uh, Nancy, number 10. Lions Run section number three, developer agreement. Whereas the title of Cicero and the developer of Lions Run section number three have the need to adopt a development and security ah. agreement for the sanitary sewer drainage and highway facilities therein in accordance with the conditions of a letter from O'Brien and Gear to the town dated April 9th, 2021, with the understanding that all securities are to be posted to any permits being issued. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board authorizes the supervisor to execute the attached security posting agreement. Second. Second, Mr. Blakey. Discussion on number 10. Um, can you, can someone explain us? Steve, maybe? Steve and Kate are there. Um, yes, so, so this is the Lions Run Section 3. They've basically finished their public infrastructure and they're getting ready to put up houses. So um, they prepared this, Ryan and Gear Ramble was doing the inspection on it and they put up the standard security and there's also a punch list item of things that were noted that um, we took more money because they weren't done quite properly. So the developer needs to, to post that money. Once the money's posted, then I believe the building permits can be issued. One, one building permit is issued because it, it's approved for one, one lot. Um, is that correct, Steve? So. Correct. Right now the subdivision isn't complete because these items have to be taken care of, but they're permitted to start one home. They have one large lot presently. Uh, Steve, do you know how many houses they are building in this phase three? Um, yeah, Kate might know the exact number. I believe it's 11. But that was what I was going to say. Guess yep. about 11. Thank you. So this is wrapping up, Judy, this is wrapping up the original preliminary right. uh, approval of Lions Run. Okay. It goes back many years. Many years. Yeah, I know. Further discussion, number 10. Clerk will call the roll. Councillor Blakey. Yes. Councillor Cart. Yes. Councillor White. Yes. Councillor Bacallo. Aye. Supervisor Meyer. Yes, I Mr. adopted. Thank you. I see some uh, faces up there and I'm not sure all who's who, so I'm gonna open it up here for number 11, Clover Senior Apartments. Again, this is an informational item. And for the folks who are there, I see I think two gentlemen, if you could give me a, a sign on who you are, introduce yourself and- uh, Sure. Okay. Sure, uh, thanks Supervi or Supervisor Meyer. Uh, my name is Rob Jack. I'm with uh, Clover Development and I'm joined this evening by Rob Sweet. Uh, he is our zoning consultant. And we just wanted to give you uh, a little bit of background on a, a project we're proposing. Um, we're proposing a senior independent living community at 6095 State Road 31. Uh, this is just west of Torchwood Lane and just west of Fire Station Number Two. Uh, this would be essentially senior apartments, for lack of a better term. Um, they would be market rate, uh, age restricted apartments, uh, not subsidized in any way. And uh, I'll just give you a little bit of background on Clover. We were started in 1987. 
uh, by Michael Joseph, who's still our, our, our president and CEO. Um, we focus strictly on senior apartments at this point. Uh, we have about 35 similar facilities operating in the Northeast and the Midwest. We have another 10 or 11 under construction. And we've identified this site uh, as, a, you know, as a, a target of ours. We do have three other sites in Onondaga County. Uh, Camillus is probably the closest site. Uh, we can get into addresses and locations later if needed. But um, key, key items for us, we, we find we pull from about the three to five mile radius. Um, our facilities allow uh, seniors to, to age in place and stay in the communities with their friends and family. They can go to the same churches, shop at the same stores, go to the same doctor. Uh, we find it frees up uh, housing stock for, uh, for younger families in the community as well. And um, what else am I forgetting, Rob? That's really, I guess, from a background standpoint or kind of who we are. Again, we're market rate, we're age restricted, consistent with the Fair Housing Act. And uh, Rob, if you want to get into some of the, uh, the specifics on the zoning, what it's we're looking for. Us. Just what I was going to do. Thanks, Rob. My name is Rob Sweet. I'm with McBride Dale Clarion, helping Clover out with this project. So we would be approaching or, or getting ready to file for a rezoning, would be uh, requesting to rezone that property at 6095 from GC to RM. So it's kind of a down zoning with that. Uh, as Rob stated, we are looking to do a senior apartment complex there. Uh, this is for folks 55 and over, and that's what differentiates us from a standard apartment uh, development. A uh, couple things to keep in mind, this is not an assisted living facility, it's not a nursing home, it's not a memory care, it's not a rehab facility. This is basically the bridge between folks 55 and over that are looking to downsize from their house and they're not quite ready to go into uh, you know, an, assisted living, an assisted living facility at this time or, or a nursing care facility. It's more uh, taking that next step. Typically, these are market rate apartments and typically our average age of our residents are 73 years old and they're primarily widowed females. Um, the proposed development that we're looking to do out here, we're looking at about 119 units uh, with a density that would give us about 7.8 uh, units per acre. The makeup of that is about 90 or so odd units to be two bedroom, one bath. Uh, the remaining units would be broken down in between one bedroom, one bath and two bedroom, one and a half baths. We are proposing about 120 parking spaces. <clears throat> Excuse me, 80 of these are surface spaces. The remaining 40 would be garages that our tenants can rent from there. Uh, within each unit, our, our units run between 650 square feet to about 900 square feet. And within each individual units, we have our own you know, kitchen, own HVAC. Um, our, our units are designed for kind of the, the older population with lower countertops, pull cords in the in the bathrooms and things of that nature. Uh, we also have private balconies and, and patios on each unit. Within each floor, we do have some residential storage. Uh, we do have trash collection and we do have the larger washer and dryer units for those folks that wanna do their own laundry or comforters or sheets or whatever um, in, those, in those areas. And then within each community, uh, this is a secured entryway. We do have an elevator system. We do provide common spaces that consist of, you know, anywhere from library space, family rooms, exercise rooms to common areas and, and um, you know, areas where if folks wanted to have a larger party with their friends, they could, they could hold that in one of their common rooms. Um, the idea behind Clover's projects are we want to keep the unit small. This creates a better quality. We found it creates a better quality of life for our residents because it forces them to get out and, and mingle or co-mingle with their, with their adjoining neighbors and, and other folks of, of similar stature. Um, some of the concerns that we typically hear about this are traffic. Uh, keep in mind that you know, we're a low traffic generator. These folks are either on the cusp of retirement or they have retired. Typically they only have one car and their schedules can be adjusted to go out to the doctor or to their appointments not during the peak hours as you would have with the standard, with the standard uh, apartment development. Uh, a couple other things to keep in mind with that is we're not providing any kind of healthcare facilities. If the residents wanna have their own healthcare, they can have somebody come in and help them, but we don't provide that. Uh, we also have a very few employees. So we typically have one, uh, I believe it's a building manager and maybe a maintenance manager 
on site at all times. Um, given this area of where we are, you know, typically we would see a lot of the snowbird folks. So these folks would have a place, you know, here and have a place maybe down south or, or out west where they can go and, and whenever the weather gets cold, uh, go to those places and, and vice versa. And at our price point, this allows them to do that. Uh, the other issue that we hear a lot about is parking and that we're under parked. And basically, again, kind of going back to that res set of residents that we have, it's typically one car. We typically use about 80% of our parking lot. So in a facility like this would use about 90, 96 spaces. Um, and then this kind of polices itself from being able to be converted to an all age apartment or you know something like that where we have a lower parking count and can't expand that parking area. Um, as Rob said, our residents come from a three to five mile radius. Um, and for our site in particular, we would have one driveway. We're not opposed to connecting to the other streets around us. However, we don't want that traffic coming through our site and probably vice versa. Those folks that live on those other streets probably don't want that traffic coming through their site. Um, and we only really want to disturb as much of the lot as we need to. Uh, you know, if you looked at our site plan, I think Rob provided us with some documentations of kind of what a concept plan looks like and some information on our units. Uh, if you if you look at that site plan, the back half of that lot is left pretty much wide open. You know, again, we don't want to disturb what we don't need. We only want to use what we need there. Uh, a couple other items, you know, we do have a strict 55 and over policy. That means no kids, no young adults. Um, sometimes grandchildren will visit. Sometimes they get kicked out a little bit sooner than maybe what the parents like. Um, and then with the lighting and the noise and some of the other, let's say, quality of life issues for the surrounding residents, typically low lights. Our residents have a tendency to go to bed a little bit earlier than some of the other folks. And our noise is relatively low. I mean, these are folks that are either, again, retirement, on the cusp retired, or they're well within the retirement age. Um, with that being said, we would be seeking a zone change for this development as well as possibly a variance for the height of, the, uh, of our building. We are looking to do three stories out there and um, then moving through with the site plan approvals uh, pending, pending positive uh, recommendations. Yeah, and I, I could share a site plan or some elevations here if, um, if you like. I, it doesn't appear I can share my screen at this point, but if somebody can adjust those settings, I can certainly pull that information up if, if need be. I had something quick for, for Rob and Rob. I, I appreciate your presentation. How well have you studied the traffic patterns right there at Route 31 in Torchwood? It's a mess. There's many accidents there now. You know, as I can speak as a, you know, a volunteer firefighter, we respond quite a bit through there. And I just, so I have a major, major concern with that intersection, especially having people, the traffic light is right there and it's, it's bad. So I don't know how. Yeah, it does, yeah. So we haven't done any any type of uh, of traffic counts or traffic study there. Um, I can say that you know, our uh, as Rob mentioned, our, our I think our peak hour is about 30, 30 cars. I think it's fourteen in and sixteen out. Um, so from a generation standpoint, we're we're not going to add a lot to that mix. And our residents uh, with their flexible schedules. Um, you know, they can, they'll adjust around school bus traffic or, you know, when, once they move in, they'll figure out when the peak flows are and kind of adjust accordingly to go out for their doctor appointments or go to the grocery store or, and so forth. So I, I will say we are, you know, we're low traffic generators and our, our folks are flexible, but to answer your question, we have not done a, uh, any type of traffic count or traffic study yet, but appreciate the heads up on, on that. Yeah. Traffic on, I mean, I, Traffic gets backed up there sometimes to Route 81 from that light. Wow. It's, it's okay. Getting out, yeah, it's a it's a pretty bad intersection as it is today. So okay. Adding anything to something that's a mess makes it even worse. So it's just yeah. my, my concern on that. Okay, understood. And we could, uh, you know, we, as Rob mentioned, we could connect through to Monitor Way in the back. Um, I'm not sure the residents, you know, what how how they might react to that, but it's something we're we're certainly open to. We don't show it on our current site plan, but that's very preliminary and conceptual, but if that, if that may alleviate some, some of the flows, um, no, <laughs> yeah, we'd be open to, to taking a look at that as we advance the site plan for sure. Connecting to monitor way, we'll push them right out onto Lakeshore Road. 
um, or either either yeah. way they would go. Um, I have a, um, a concern because you speak about it's 55 and up, you're saying? Correct. Um, I find that there are very few retirees of 55. It seems like uh, they are not re even thinking of retiring till 65 to 70 now. Right. So um, yeah, there's so no the guarantee that these residents would be retired folks. They, they could be working. Right. right. The, uh, the Fair Housing Act allows us to restrict 55 and above. So that's, that's kind of where we set our threshold. Um, in reality, though, folks in our communities are 70, uh, 70 plus. As Rob mentioned, our, our, our average age is 73. Uh, widowed female is, is really who, who a lot of times ends up living in our facilities. Um, th there are some people that do have a job, but it's, uh, it's certainly uh, the minority and not, uh, not the majority of our folks. Any of the board members have any further questions? Uh, if you, sir, the two gentlemen, if you could uh, provide your uh, contact information. Uh, so in case any of the board members have any follow-up questions, they can uh, contact you directly, okay? Okay. All right, sure. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay uh, thank you. next item Next item on the agenda discussion item, uh, I have just one good news item, so to speak. The weather is getting great. We're out, we're out and about more in the neighborhood, so that's that's a good thing. Getting a little exercise and flowers are coming up and people are out actually a little bit later walking the neighborhoods. One of the things you could do when you're out and about, please, if you happen to see any of those street lights that are out, um, please uh, make note of this phone number. I'm gonna give you 800-322-3223 in option two. And then you can make the call and help us out a little bit, call National Grid directly and they can uh, do the repairs. So we have our, uh, all our streets with a proper safe lighting. So I'm gonna repeat the uh, number again, 800-322-3223, option number two. And it'll be part of a voice response system. And again, help us keep the uh, lights on. Okay, next item, Judy. Um, do we skip 12? Yes. Oh, I'm, you're, you're correct, I apologize. Uh, number 12, uh, the town board approves the security fencing project at the police department, whereas the Cicero Police Department received 16720 in state law enforcement terrorism prevention program funding for the first phase of perimeter security fencing at the police department located at 6200 State Route 31, Cicero, New York, 13039. And whereas the Cicero Police Department obtained three quotes Butler Fence Incorporated, uh, next firm 315 Fencing and Syracuse Fencing was since withdrawn as quote, due to not being able to complete the project. The police department recommends Butler Fence Incorporated as they were the only vendor that could complete the project in its totality. Now, therefore, it be resolved. The town board approves the construction of the first phase of the police department perimeter security fencing project to be completed by Butler Fence Incorporated Budget Code B31201SL. Second. Ms. Boyke, apologize again for missing that item. Uh, discussion on number 12. Clerk will call the roll. Councillor Boyke? Yes. Councillor Carr? Yes. Councillor Wilby? Yes. Councillor Vitalo? Aye. Supervisor Meyer? Yes, item is adopted. Okay. Back to 13, Judy. Okay. Um, just wanted to do a little update on the comprehensive plan. Uh, since the board had approved of my going forward with the, um, to uh, update, I have uh, done some extensive uh, work searching out, obviously, uh, how the uh, way this is going to be paid for. Um, plus, I've attended uh, uh, several seminars um, via Zoom to get a full understanding. The comprehensive plan um, involves individuals um, from uh, obviously zoning, um, uh, 
uh, the planning board, the ZBA, uh, and myself as the chairperson. I have two volunteers right now uh, who are uh, proficient in the area of Cicero, uh, which um, I've discussed things with. But I had a nice conversation with the MRB group out of Rochester. Uh, they are the folks who um, were the prime uh, component in building our highway garage. They also had provided some information regarding um, the town hall facility for other reasons. But finding out that they write grants no cost to write them. And with that, um, it would uh, obviously give us an opportunity to find a way to alleviate the uh, cost, most of the cost of this comprehensive plan that we are in definite need of. And um, because it would be an update instead of a grassroots start um, that that is in our favor as well. So I uh, just wanted to give everyone an update on it. I am going to meet um, with MRB Group and get a more uh, understanding, a fuller understanding of uh, possible costs um, because they need to obviously um, understand our full, uh, what we need to do in order to be, uh, have ourselves uh, a new, at least, guide and comprehensive plan for the town of Cicero. So I will leave it at that and uh, keep you guys updated. Thank you. Appreciate the work, Judy. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Thank you. Okay, any other items from the board members? Uh, I have nothing for the uh, public input uh, for number 14. Uh, so we've gone through the agenda. I'll uh, move to adjourn the next meeting is the uh, 28th. I move it to a second. Second. Uh, voice vote, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. See you folks the uh, 28th.